Hello and welcome back to the volume. <laughs> what? You're just waiting to me to yeah. speak so I can answer up. Yeah. So what did you say? Oh, nothing. Um, okay, good. That's, that's the exact thing I want to hear of a guest <laughs> on a podcast. I've got nothing to say. Um, yeah, welcome back to Volumes. Uh, this is Friday's episode, the regular Friday show. Um, so good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, or good night, whenever you're watching this. It's a podcast, it's always there, you can watch it anytime. Uh, my name is Tom Gibson, I am joined today with Lucy Cunningham, and we are going to discuss something. But Lucy doesn't know what it is. No. Nope. Are you ready? This is something that's been on my mind lately, and you'll understand why it's been on my right. mind. Uh, Lucy will. Maybe you won't, but Lucy will. Uh, but before I jump into it, mm -hmm. I want to say something. I want to say uh, that I am not uh, educated enough in any subject to be a person of value of that subject. <laughs> I have no skills. Self-love. <laughs> <laughs> self-awareness. Yeah, I think self-awareness is definitely more important than self-love. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, what I'm saying is that, look, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just talking. I'm not- Side note me either. I'm, yeah, we don't know what we're talking about. We're not here to give you answers. I'm speaking as if like I got like a hate comment. So I'm just like, who, who are you? No, but I'm just it's saying. Like, every time we stop podcasts, I'm like, Tom, you can't say that. You can't say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just thought they're like, did I say that? I probably did say that. <laughs> um, yeah. So what I'm what I'm really saying is that I don't I like. I guess there's two different types of podcasts I want to do. There's like this one, which is just rambling and like talking and tangents and stuff um, and I like these ones and because it's just like I don't know it gets me thinking and it, uh, hopefully it gets well this is what I'm really hoping for it gets the listener thinking so I'm, I don't want you to to go oh what Tom believes that or oh Tom thinks I should believe this what I'm really saying is if I'm bringing something up I want you to think about it and even better I want you to engage in it and, and message me and contact me and tell me what you think about it because that's what I want to do. I want to start conversations and I want to communicate. Tom, you can't say that. <laughs> I want to communicate ideas. Stop looking at me like that. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm not allowed to say that. Um, uh, yeah, I hope I make that clear. And then there's the other type of podcast, which is guests. And I just want to hear them talk about stuff. But so they, if anything they say is offensive, that's, yeah, that's on them. That's their problem. Yeah. And even better, when it's a that's podcast... That's why you stick uh, their at and just so they yeah. know who to direct the hate towards. When it's a podcast like this, mm -hmm. uh, I'm also saying don't hate me because I'm just rambling. I'm not, I'm not actually... Whatever I'm saying, I don't mean. I'm just saying have, it to get I you thinking. I have no filter. Like, how true is it that I just don't have any yeah. filter? Yeah, I believe that. I but I also, instant regret with so many things that I say. I don't think you should have instant regret because most of what you're saying... You like you're you're a compassionate person, so most of what you're saying is coming from a good yeah. place. Um, so that's a good, that's a perfectly good thing you have no filler. The problem is I have no filler, and most of what I'm saying yeah, is far nice. too logical, and I'm I'm <laughs> totally not coming from a compassionate place sometimes. Tom has um, a heart of stone, sometimes mushy. Sometimes yeah. mushy yeah, stone. Yeah, like when it comes to <laughs> dogs and babies, yeah. you get a little mushy. Well, I'm not a complete sociopath. Was <laughs> Um, but yeah, I want to discuss, or the, this is the uh, this is the tagline, right? Okay. Or the question that I'm about to pose. Okay. What if I hate it? You're just gonna have to go on it. Drop mic. It's very me. relevant to where we are right now and what's going okay. on. Should you have to make money from your hobbies? That's my question. Should you have to make money from your hobbies? Or not have to, but should you make money from your hobbies? This is, uh, so the reason I'm asking this question is because I've actually been seeing it a lot everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people are like, oh, it's very capitalist to force us into an idea where it's okay to try and make money for hobbies. And I don't know if that's right. I, I mean, I, I get where they're coming from, that it's like our hobby should be our free place to do what we want and sort of like let our minds express ourselves and just run free. Mm -hmm. um, 
But but then I also see the other side of the, the argument. It's like maybe you could free yourself from the capitalist world by uh, finding hobbies that you love. And then if you love them so much, then you don't care to engage in work and whatever because you're making enough money for that and you're enjoying it enough to, to be free from it. What do you think? Yeah, well, weren't we talking about this the other day when you mentioned Seth Rogen? Oh, yeah, yeah. The same kind of thing about how Seth Rogen actually, at heart, he just loves making pottery, right? Yeah, I read, I read, I hope this is actually true. It'd be (laughs) great if this was true. I read that Seth, there was a quote that Seth Rogen said that he's, uh, he loves making movies and stuff, but he'd much rather just spend the rest of his life making pot, pot yeah. like doing pottery or but then I think that was it. his acting career has also given him yeah the ability to just do pottery whenever and however he wants whenever he wants and but that's kind of the other way around if you think about it because he's working to do his hobby rather than doing his hobby and making money from it yeah i guess i guess seth rogan's kind of a poor example because he's living the dream anyway you know he's loaded, i mean maybe we... and it's not it's not so much a case of I am trying to survive. Do I want to try and survive in a job or do I want to try and survive making a job out of my hobby so that I'm enjoying surviving a little bit more, you know? Do you, <laughs> do you think that making money as the as like the life? Like you're saying that like he's won because he's making money. Lots of money. Well, yeah, that's part of it, I think, maybe probably for him because I mean it buys him certain things. <laughs> like, uh, pottery. like pottery, <laughs> um, <laughs> like pot, pottery. <laughs> um, <laughs> Greatest joke ever. Do you know? What? I think we should finish up now. I think um, Seth Rogen needs to hear this now because that was so banging. <laughs> he um, was using that in one of his movies. Yeah, maybe he's a bad. I forgot what I was saying. Maybe he's a bad example. I mean, he's living the life in terms of like. He's clearly, he's clearly a happy guy. I mean, from what it, it seems, seems like, like a happy guy. Yeah, he seems just very chill. And I'm sure he loves making movies, you know. It's a cool lifestyle. I guess it's hard to say that because yeah, we're not, we we're don't not Seth Rogen. But, yeah. I mean, from all from what we can see, he's living the life, you know. Um, but, yeah, it's very different from someone who's thinking, how am I going to survive life? Mm. <laughs> how am I going to keep up with making payments and things like that yeah um, in which case it, it is a very risky decision whether you want to continue in a job that's most definitely making you sad <laughs> or pursuing your hobby which is definitely going to be a big risk you know most most creative hobbies are a big risk um yeah interesting question though thank you i'll let you think about it a bit more uh-huh mm-hmm. Um, and I'll I'll say some, or I'll give my sort of opinion on it. Mm-hmm. Um, but to give some context, I have this uh, philosophy. I don't know if I read it somewhere or whatever, but it's always stuck in the back of my mind whenever I'm doing literally anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's that I mean I've told you this before, but I'll just reiterate that I believe. I guess it's sort of nihilist to believe this, but also, it's like a. It's not an act of nihilist thing. Mm-hmm. It's like just a sort of like a, a philosophy without uh, practice. Okay. But the that life is just finding things to distract yourself from life. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what I feel like life is. We talk about that a lot, don't we? Yeah. I mean, I mean, this feeling of like emptiness and hopelessness can only kind of be filled when you're looking forward to things or definitely yeah. in my personal opinion like yeah. the times when I'm most happy or when I've got things planned not when I'm actually doing the things that I've planned um, like you'd imagine which when those things kind of come around I get that feeling of emptiness again because I'm like oh my gosh this isn't what I hoped it would feel like mm. and it's not distracting me but see when I'm just like when I've got a holiday planned or I'm meeting friends tomorrow or something mm. like that something that I'm excited for those moments of like anticipation for those times is what kind of like fills my void for mm. some strange reason and I have a feeling it's probably the same for a lot of people you know well I, I would say I'm different from you there is because mm. even doing the thing that I was looking forward to yeah. also still feels good yeah I enjoy that's it that's good that's good um, no I mean it's... I mean I've yeah 
I'm saying that as if every time I do fun things that I've planned, no, no, I feel no, empty. Course, no, no. That's not the case, but quite a lot of the times. Maybe, <laughs> I, I honestly think just, it's just that I'm easier distracted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am, uh, yeah, I, I find Definitely. things, I can be easily distracted by anything. And I mean, I'm not, like that sounds so, it sounds so negative and depressing to say that life is just finding alternatives and, and things that can keep you distracted it's from the life truth itself. Though, isn't it? But I really think, <laughs> yeah, if you want to actually enjoy life the most, mm -hmm. that's a really integral point to that. Yeah, if it's you if you find the key to what makes you feel happy. Yeah. Just um, do it. For me that's the key to what doesn't make me feel terrible, <laughs> you know, like Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Depends um, where you sit on the scale, you know. So I, I like I, I think there's like some things that every person should like. Like I don't. I'm not saying everyone should just pure indulge themselves with like books and philosophy and and like thought and contemplation. But I think there's like a few, like a handful of things that you could just learn. Mm -hmm. Just like learn the quote of, and you could better your life by keeping those things on yeah. on demand. Like the yeah. idea that life is just finding uh, things to do to distract yourself from life. Like if you, whenever you do things from then on knowing that, that might help in your decision making because you're like, well, why not? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Why not? Because I'm just going to, what am I going to do? Like uh, my alternative is I just sit and do nothing. Yeah. And that's, that's like how you manifest the worst sort of situations yeah. by doing nothing. Um, and I mean like literally nothing, just like mindlessly scrolling through social media or something like that, mm. when you could be engaging in just a little bit. Because everybody likes doing something more like than doing nothing. Yeah. Like nobody experiences like good from doing nothing in a prolonged period of time. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe like another one of those things that you, could, like, you should always have on, on demand is like that we're all, that this again sounds so pessimistic. And uh, I don't mean to be like like, I don't know, being so negative, but just that we are just uh, finite flesh yeah. and we will die. Inevitably, we will die at one point, some sooner, some later. We don't know. It's it's completely randomised. A wee bit exciting. What can I say? Um, Do you know what it's kind of but like? It just it ends at one point. And yeah. that, I feel like that's good to know because that definitely, definitely influences decision making because as soon as you realise... I mean, not just realise as in you understand that sentence and you know what it means, but really, uh -huh. like, to your, to your core, yeah. understand in your psyche and your energy that you are going to die and everything is just going <laughs> to, uh, like, not die as in, like, ev everyone around you knows that you're dead, but you yourself know you're dead. Your energy is literally dispersed into everything and you're just black forever, gone, nothing. That's it. What do you have to lose? There is no value in doing nothing anymore. Mm -hmm. When you know that everything will come to a, an end, you will do. I think you'll you'll do everything. Where I mean, I, I like to say I'm just a yes man. Anything that people ask me, I'm like, yeah, why not? <laughs> well, I mean, what have I got to lose? You're bold. You know, I'm no, I'm not bold at all. I'm absolutely not bold. I think that the reason I'm like this is purely because one of those two things. One sometimes the other, and yeah, it just like depends on the situation. Commonly used phrases. I'm gonna die anyway. I'm gonna die. I am gonna die. <laughs> They're anyway. gonna die anyway. You're gonna Who die. Cares I'm gonna if die. They see what I'm wearing right now, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sorry, going back to the idea that everything's a distraction and stuff. I just kind yeah. of thought of like a way to see it. Mm -hmm. Do you know, like, when for me being really unfit? Do you know <laughs> when you're like running, or I remember like running in school, okay. or doing a sport or something. And you'd be fine and you'd be moving, you'd be running along the race track or whatever. And it was only when you stopped that you realised how exhausted you were. Or like if you went to have a break, you realised how exhausted mm. you are. I remember playing basketball and you'd stop and I'd realise how hot and sweaty yeah. and knackered yeah, yeah. I really was. But while I was moving, it wasn't so bad. Yeah. But if you kept going for hours and hours and hours and hours, you would just eventually like combust you know it would be far too much and when you eventually stopped it would just be way 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 too much mm. that's kind of what it's like how you're kind of oh, i've lost it 
<laughs> I totally well, saw no, the I, clear. Uh, do you know what I mean? Like I totally. I saw see the, the parallels image. in a sense. Yeah, yeah. Like, I guess, uh, like the parallel could possibly be. Oh that. yeah, yeah. Like you're distracting yourself with yep. the movement of everyday life, yeah. right? And then when you take a break, like at night, see when I'm going to bed at night, or I'm on my own and I'm just, I don't know, I like a downtime from the busyness. Mm. I'm like, oh man, I feel terrible. I feel rubbish, I feel knackered, really? everything is catching up with me. Especially when I'm going to bed at night and it gets dark outside. I just feel miserable, you know, and very philosophical and existential. Right. But if I'm busy constantly and I'm going for days and days and days and days, it's far too much for me. Mm. And then that low feels even lower. So I think what you need to do is you do need to have those breaks, you know? And right. for me, like those breaks, yeah, they, it's like a bit of a slump. But as long as you keep yourself distracted in little bouts, mm. it's, I feel like that's a good way to do it. Hmm, yeah. Also seems really pessimistic, but it was just a kind of way that I saw it in my own head. No, no, I, 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 it's similar to that idea, like if you're having fun, time flies. Yeah. If you're distracted by something, yeah. time goes fast. Yeah. That's why I really, I mean, this is, I guess, why I'm posing the question of, should you make money from your hobbies? Because you have a job mm -hmm. so that you can be alive, so you can get food that keeps you alive, and so you mm -hmm. can have a roof over your head yeah. when you go to sleep and all that kind of stuff, but also so you can fund your hobbies for a lot of people. Um, Here's another way to see and, that uh, exactly through sport. Imagine, so for me, I loved basketball and dancing and things like that that were actually fun. But then running, all running was was a reminder that I was exercising. So in a way, when I was running, I would be constantly tired and feeling miserable because I was like, this sucks. But then if I was dancing, I could dance for hours and not get tired, right? So working in an office or something you don't really enjoy doing it's a constant reminder that you're That's literally living say, and actually. surviving and this is reality yeah. and this sucks but, but if you're living hobby, doing your hobby yeah. like dancing you'd be distracted it's like you're you distracted paying attention yeah, to the yeah. clock you and then when you rest like you might feel a bit rubbish but it's not as bad as your rest from running mm -hmm. is it you know so it's like yeah you're you're still on this like not on the same path but you're still making money from these things, but are you doing it in a way that it's something that you hate and everything is a reminder and nothing's a distraction? You know, you yeah. can't you can't be distracted by something you hate. And I mean, not just to spend all this time just uh, constantly clarifying that we're or uh, like covering our own backs, but that's a good example because I actually enjoy running, mm -hmm. so it, it doesn't bother me. I'm not I'm not paying attention to the fact that I'm running. If yeah. anything, it helps me clear my mind and let my thoughts run differently. Mm -hmm. And obviously you don't like running. But mm -hmm. then that's a good example to say that, I mean, I, I don't like jobs. I don't want to sit in an office. I can't bear that. Mm -hmm. I, I, the thought of that just yeah, like, makes me lose yeah. all meaning for life. It, like, like I hate the thought of running. Some, some exactly, but some people love, love their job. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I'm sure I'd find a hundred jobs that I'd enjoy, a thousand maybe, mm -hmm. um, but just the most generic jobs you get, they're not things that I, that align with what I enjoy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that idea of making money from your hobby is really interesting, but if you can make a lot from your hobby, I think it's worthwhile. Um, I mean, personally, I would rather, I would personally much rather just do my hobbies. Here's a thought though, so say you're running on the weekdays and that's your office job and you, but you, your absolute passion is basketball mm -hmm. and on the weekends you do basketball, it's the best thing ever, it's the best attraction ever, you love it, but then say that you switch from running to basketball so every you weekday it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's how you make your living, that's how you survive, you're doing basketball all the time and it kills the passion that you once had. Yeah, but well, that's the fear. That's isn't the it? problem, isn't it? What does does pursuing your hobby as a li for to make a living? Does that? Don't know. Does it kill the? I mean, it depends on the person. It definitely depends on the person. Yeah. Um, like I know that when I started doing photography gigs. Mm -hmm. I didn't like photography as much afterwards. Yeah. 
Um, you see it in a different light. Yeah, I mean, it, but then isn't that just the commercial aspect of it that killed it? Because mm. then I was working for someone, I wasn't just getting to create what I wanted to create. Yeah. And that could kill it. And then, like, for example, like if someone is a athlete and really loves basketball and then they, they do that professionally, then they've mm-hmm. got coaches and they, they have to have, like, I don't know, a full marketing team or whatever, whatever's going on. Yeah. That definitely could kill it. And that makes a lot of sense why it would kill it. But then I know that if I made money off this podcast, I I wouldn't do anything else I would just do this why I mean this is nothing would change by me making money from this yeah I feel like writing would be the same for me I don't think it would make me hate it at all because it's just you doing it you know but maybe writing books and then you have an editor an editor saying well this isn't going to sell very well but this will that could kill it but at the same time isn't it better to to waste the time that we have on this earth doing something that's sort of like project based where you have a final outcome like a book i think you should what you should do in life is something that you actually have a personal connection gain with. from you oh, know a personal gain from yeah right. or like i don't really know how to put it but you're invested not you're not invested for the money you're not invested for someone else to make money you're invested because you actually want to see an outcome you know but then you really just can't work in a job then because every job is you working for someone else so someone else can make money yeah i mean there's really there's no job unless you're a freelancer i don't think there's a job (laughs) or you're you're the the boss well definitely people are always going to see it in different lights aren't they like people there must be people out there that want to work in an office there has to be um (laughs) (laughs) Nah. <laughs> <laughs> they just think they do <laughs> um, see I feel like I mean maybe I'm wrong in saying this but I feel like the, the the jobs that look good in offices look good because of the parents and the parents are there because they, they're there to make them look good yeah exactly <laughs> like uh, oh having the company's credit card so you can go out for dinner and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. those are just selling points mm-hmm. it's like signing a contract with a devil no matter what, you still lose. Yeah. You're not the guy winning in this situation. Yeah. It just depends how many perks you get along the way. Mm-hmm. That's what it feels like for me. Um, it's like going on a medication for for one what, yeah. solution, but you're killing also, yourself for yeah, other yeah. things. Yeah, has a thousand other yeah. uh, bad side effects. Yeah, yeah, like it, like a, I don't know, gives you good hair. <laughs> but, it, but it just kills your kidneys <laughs> like it just looks good on oh. the surface but deep down it's totally ruining everything yeah. um, I, I just want to go back to actually the, the idea of like there's like a handful of things that you should always have in your mind mm-hmm. um, and I think one of them that's probably harder to believe than the other two but I think it's definitely really important and ties in with the other two really well is that Nobody really cares what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Like, nobody cares what's going on. Um, and, I mean, I'm not saying, again, that sounds pessimistic and negative and whatever, but I don't mean it in a bad light. There's a lot of people that do care and a lot of people that are engaged. And, but what I mean is, like, you could think, you could sit there and think, oh, I'm not going to do that. What will people think? That will be embarrassing mm-hmm. or whatever. They don't care. They just, they just or do not they care. Do, what are the consequences of that? No, but they just, they, I honestly don't think they will. They just don't. I mean, I've got a podcast. I'm just some guy that has a podcast. That's a bit weird. Like, do you know what I mean? It's, it's a bit strange. I've had a YouTube channel. You've had a YouTube channel. We've made content. Do you know what I mean? These are all things that are definitely like, uh, slightly like, uh, what's the word? Like, uh, it, it deviates from the mainstream in mm-hmm. a way. Mm-hmm. But nobody actually cared. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you do something offensive, so people care. And I think judgment, even... That judgment matters. Um, I think, because... I, even at that, most people don't care. Mm. I mean, people have done horrific things in history and nothing really changes. Honestly, I mean, hopefully I'm not yeah, inciting bad stuff here, but I really mean that if you want to go do something, hopefully, hopefully, go do something good, please. But if you want to go do something, you can just go do it. Because nobody really cares what you're doing. And see if you feel embarrassed. Nobody cares. 
nobody thinks you're, what you're doing is embarrassing. Um, like, if you, like Lucy, name a name, just something that you've witnessed that's embarrassing. To uh, like someone else yeah. do. Someone else do. Um, taking too people long. People get really. Um, you're you're taking way too long. And making speeches in uni and so do I but that's probably why I pay attention to it <laughs> but I mean even that that you still had to like you had to no because I wanted to say it without like being too specific about what occasion even at that I don't think do you have uh, think, specific people in that, mind yeah do you have specific uh-huh. people in mind I think people that are maybe like slightly I think people are judgy about things that they're self-conscious about amongst themselves though I've always said this like um having acne when I was young or well I still do have acne I notice it in other people not because I'm judging I just notice it you know right. and being really really anxious about public speaking I notice when other people get really nervous yeah but, but do you care though that's my point do I care about what like the yeah, other person's acne you know, or the you other person's everything. nervousness yeah everything no. you notice all these things yeah. I'm not saying that we're oblivious to yeah, reality yeah. what I'm saying is that we just don't care do you care? No, like, for I, example, I had... I don't care, no. I had terrible eczema as a child. Like, so bad that I had to have uh, my my socks stitched to my T-shirts so I wouldn't scratch myself because I would always be bleeding. My face was, was all cut up. I've got a big scar down my face from uh, scratching. It's very cute. Thanks, Oh, Making me blush. <laughs> making my scar blush. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> like, so even now, like, I'll absolutely notice people that have eczema. At any age, I'll just notice it. And it, it like or bad eczema i remember even being at the when i was like a few years back i uh, saw like a kid that also had like a yeah. really young kid now I, I was maybe like 20 no must have been like 19 mm-hmm. and i saw a kid and he had socks stitched his mm-hmm. jumper and i was like oh man i know what that kid's going through oh. but uh i remember being with the people i was around and they didn't even notice it like, cause it's it's not something that they mm. ever experienced. It's not something they had any like. Yeah. They they don't pay. I guess that subconscious attention to it, and I, I but I did, but I didn't care. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I didn't care. I didn't go up to the kid, ask him, man, how how you handling that. I didn't. Do you know what I mean? I didn't mm. acknowledge it really. I didn't bring attention to it in any sense. Mm. And, and what uh, does it matter if it's something you remember? What actually does that matter? It doesn't. I feel like the only situation in which these things matter really is when there's someone that's like a weirdo because they're being a bully <laughs> about stuff. Oh, when someone, And okay, people yeah. that bully, they've got bigger issues to deal with mm. than other people's insecurities, you know? They've got... S- <laughs> Bullies are a weird one, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm... I hope I'm getting this across well. I'm not just like mind spewing without actually any uh, content here or uh, context yeah any substance um but i'm just trying to say that you can really go and do whatever you want to do be the person you want to be because really nobody really cares who you are right now and who you're going to be anyway Mm -hmm. so you might as well go do something that means a lot to you because really you're the only one that should be and think yourself. of how many things you could do and accomplish if you didn't hold back because of judgment the fear of judgment think about the absolute utopia we'd be living in yep. and if everyone did that it would be heavenly yeah again hopefully the things that people want to do though are actually <laughs> good things um because a few people in history that probably thought quite like that and they did terrible yeah, things yeah but yeah go do it good has, things it has limits we mean things that are just like, go oh, and do embarrassing. It. That's embarrassing. Yeah, that's embarrassing. Not Can't things that. that are morally bad. I mean, yeah. <laughs> there's definitely a, a difference between things that are, oh, I have a passion to do this yeah. thing and I have a desire I, to. Like, yeah, yeah do I have good a passion to do this thing, but I'm embarrassed what I'm people scared. might think. Yeah, yeah. Like, Not, oh, I want to kill a cat, but I'm scared that I get imprisoned. <laughs> yeah, do not kill cats. We do not condone killing cats. Um, <laughs> I mean, maybe no. Don't kill cats. <laughs> uh, go, just go do something creative. I demand you all that. Unless you're not into creative stuff, and go do some sums. Go invent something. I mean, oh, that's creative. That's creative. Yeah, invent something. <laughs> I mean, even sums you could say is creative. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. 
have creativity, it's hard something to draw the love. lines there. To even box in the idea of creativity, wouldn't that defeat its purpose? Deep. Just like uh, <laughs> uh, spirituality, spirituality. <laughs> box in the context of spirituality as an ever flowing thing. <laughs> Shout out to the previous episode. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that the answer to the question that is posed is impossible to answer. Mm-hmm. Can't answer that because it really depends on the person. Um, but it's an interesting one to think about. If you have a hobby and you think I'm pretty damn good at that, and you enjoy it, why not make money from it though? I, unless it's killing the hobby, why not make money from it? I think so many people see their hobbies as something that they simply cannot pursue. Like, um, what were you watching earlier? I think it was probably a TikTok, and it was a guy saying like, he he just used to make artwork for fun, and then one day he just decided to start taking himself mm-hmm, seriously, yeah. and he now he he just does it for a living. And like, yeah. all he had to do was believe in himself. As yeah. cheesy as it sounds, he just believed in himself, and he he went out and he did it. They didn't yeah. care what people thought. I hate that cliches are hated. Cliches are cliches because... Because they're consistent. Yeah. They turn yeah. up a lot. They, in, because they work. In time, they're, yeah. They're true. Exactly. I mean, how many people in history just didn't take that leap? Mm-hmm. How many great people could we have had? M- millions. I bet millions yeah. that just didn't go and do it. Yeah. I mean, there's probably millions that didn't have the opportunity to do it and didn't mm. have the, the circumstances that went right. But I mean, there's so many that just everything was hitting right and just didn't believe in themselves. Um, Some which people is so in history just they knew the secret, and the secret was just believe. Yeah, just believe. Just Things believe. Things happen and when you just believe. Just go do it. And uh, mm. and again, it brings us back round to the the uh, that fundamental point you should always have in your mind, and it's that. Life is just a, finding distractions from life. And see if you end up not achieving it. You're going to die and you're not going to have any time to complain about you're it. Because you were be so distracted, distracted by, <laughs> by trying to pursue it in the first place. It's which not, is even it's better. It's not a sad thing to be distracted from life and that's death. It. That's all you need to do. You can have deep philosophical chats about it. Don't be scared of it. Just acknowledge that that's where the fun times come from. Yeah. They stem from just being distracted. Just... Not yeah. thinking about anything. Yeah. Also, being, being a kid before you knew about the doom and gloom in the world, that's when we were truly happy, you know? Because when yeah. we're a kid, we're distracted all the time. Everything is new. Everything, Everything is distracts new. us. And that's why we reminisce on it so much because we just, we were free back then, you know? Yeah. So just free, free yourself. Distract exactly. yourself. That's a good way of putting it, yeah. Um, and also, yeah, that is the kind of distraction we're talking about here. Distraction that's real. Not just sitting on your phone, distracted yeah. mindlessly, but distracted in engagement. Yeah. Distracted by conversation or or even a good book. I mean, consuming can be really good. Like, con- like engaging all that kind of stuff. Eng- engaging in tons of different things. It's like, it might be um, misconstrued as like escapism, but Don't, I feel yeah. like... They, I feel like they do overlap in a sense because no, for me overlap, with like yeah. movies and stories, they are a great distraction for me. Yeah. And not just a distraction, but you do just kind of slip into another world and you don't you just forget about all your own problems and your own fears and things like that. You know, you live life through someone else. I feel like those distractions are short though. Yeah, they are. They and are. not not real enough. Yeah. Those are afterwards. Because when you come back, there's like a yeah, it's like, like what a crash. A two hour movie, and then afterwards, that what's next? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then you can't just watch another just two watch hour another. movie. Yeah, another one, another one, well, another one. Well, you can't because you have like. <laughs> I have what? <laughs> I have what? Say it. Well, no. I'm... I will, well, I don't. I don't want to say it in case you don't actually have it, but I actually do think you do have ADHD. Like Why do you not want to say it? Because again? I don't want it to make it sound like a joke, like I'm making it like, oh, you just have it and just like mislabel it. But I actually do think you have ADHD. How do you get diagnosed? Just go to a doctor, a specialist. I don't think you need to go to them. I think it's got all the signs. Okay. You're, not you're, thing. you're things ticking don't, the boxes. Things don't even need to be labelled. Like, I don't like labelling well, things. I'm I was just, just like... about to say, really controversial opinion. I don't actually... Uh, 
I don't really believe that a- a different type ADHD of is legitimate. Do you not? Or autism. No, yeah, I get what you mean. Um, I, I think... Just everyone is yeah. different and we just have to put people into boxes. That's the only thing. To, to say that those are real and then like label them as like what mental disabilities or mental differences is so silly to me because when you've got a broken leg it's broken yeah when it's not broken it's not broken yeah it's one or the other yeah and there's like a few different alternatives to that like it could be fractured or or whatever blah blah blah, right this is adhd is such a spectrum Mm -hmm. that at one point it starts and one point it's like the utmost it can be. It's like Therefore, imagine... everyone is lying on that scale. Therefore, it doesn't exist. If we're all that, it doesn't really exist. And there's no point even bringing it up in the first yeah. place. So like, Unless you add actual started... numerical value to it. Like, you're 85% ADHD. Yeah, and then yeah. it's not even worthwhile. Because what do we achieve by even discussing it? Imagine they started labelling people who weren't hyperactive and sat on their butts all day like me. They if do. They started they're they're saying they're called they... depressed. Well, yeah, but people that aren't depressed. <laughs> but say there's someone that just has like an office job, right? And mm-hmm. they're happy living that way. And they they started labeling them something, saying that because they were different from people who were hyperactive and people who had autism and things like that, they started labeling them as something, but saying that it was a disorder. Right, so like... You yeah. know what I mean? Just like, because at this point, what is the default... You know, because everyone's depressed, everyone has anxiety. Mm. The majority of people have mental health disorders or behavioural disorders, disorders. Or behavioural disorders. Or behavioural disorders. I'm only, I'm only yeah. naming them what others have named them, yeah. you know. People are just, everyone is different. So what even is default at this point? Who are the people that don't have these things, you know? Everyone has things these days and who who needs them? What's it, what good do they do other than helping people who are really struggling with deep problems you know yeah i mean yeah unless you're really going through something if your adhd is making you ill and making your life quality of life yeah ill Ill or dangerous that's a problem um then then we should label it yeah well well labeling would only help to treat Treat to treat, it. yeah, yeah. Or exactly. To make your situation better, you yeah. know, rather than just say treat like a disease. But no, uh, you can until treat, it's yeah. a, until it's at that point. Then why do we need? Why to... do we no? Why do we refrain from mm-hmm. saying treat like it is a disease? Because if it's making you ill or making yeah. you dangerous, yeah, yeah, it is a disease. Yeah. We we would never say that. We would never hold back from saying, "Oh, you need to treat your I don't know syphilis." You yeah, just yeah, say yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You just say it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that the fact that we hold ourselves back mm-hmm. as this and it's, it's a discrimination. Yeah. Okay. It, yeah. It, I get like you. criminalizes, it demonizes, it makes things sound so sinister and evil to say, yeah. "Oh, we can't say that." Hush, hush. I guess it's because maybe people see these things as, "Oh, if someone has ADHD, then they are a pers- an ADHD person rather than just someone with an." with something that affects them. Exactly. That's why I don't think yeah, it's yeah. even worth labeling you. until it you. is dangerous yeah um like you wouldn't say that someone has i don't know the symptoms of syphilis yeah they either have syphilis or they don't yeah right they don't have the symptoms of adhd you have adhd or you don't and you should only have adhd once it's worthwhile labeling so that it can be treated or helped um i mean and i i I, sounds like i'm being uh, an extremist (laughs) by saying that and I understand, like I'm self-aware enough to sound, like understand that that does sound extreme in a sense, just because it does deviate from the norm. Mm. But it doesn't, it, do, it doesn't seem crazy to me. No, to just, it's like, just society has constructed this idea that it's, it, it alienates people, you know, because suddenly there's 500 plus, for, thousands and thousands of disorders that you can um, spot in yourself and decide that you have and uh, diagnose yourself you know and it alienates people and it, it divides people and it causes problems you know what um, does labeling yeah 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 okay and i don't know i feel like i've maybe virgin on like conspiracies but <laughs> i don't know like capitalism you know 
<laughs> I, I don't think that's a conspiracy at all. Capitalism is definitely a real I thing. I don't even if I'm trying to link it, link I it to capitalism. I just know links. that I just know that capitalism is a problem here. No. I don't. I don't think that's how it links at all. Mm. I don't think that it's companies trying to capitalize no. on disorder. I just disorder think society is what we set us up disorder. in a way where it's like you have something wrong, you have something wrong, you have something wrong, you. And at this point, everyone has got 101 things wrong with them. And at that point, is there even something wrong with them, or is it just something? <laughs> I think it's just. I, I mean, I think it's knowledge. I think we just know so much. We don't know we what can, to do with all of yeah, it. Yeah, we can label things. Yeah. Like at one point, we just didn't know stuff. We were just yeah. like, that guy just seems a bit weird. Acts a bit different from everyone else. Yeah. We're not gonna give him a name. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's just. He's still just Paul. That's yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? They, but now we know what's causing that. Yeah. It's a specific spike in dopamine or whatever. <laughs> and now we give it a name and we we, uh, yeah. we catalogue it and this guy has this or that girl has that and whatever. And, and it's, it's just so thing. thorough at this point. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure the labelling does help many people. I don't. Oh, many, yeah, many yeah, people. I don't people. think that labelling helps. Uh, it's, I think it's been worse for the majority than it has. Yeah, I think for, for a lot of people though, it's good. it's settling to when people realise that what they're experiencing isn't just like that. There is an explanation that can bring comfort to some people that there is some kind of chemical explanation as to why they're feeling that way, or you know, do yeah. you know what I mean? And that can bring comfort to a lot of people, I'm sure. Um, and I'm not just about to say that's because <clears throat> I I want to be like. I want to like a an escape if anyone's like oh that's really controversial you shouldn't have said that but I want to say it because I genuinely care to learn and see if you don't agree with this tell me yeah. tell me why you don't agree because I'm curious to hear other people's opinions on this yeah. this isn't just like I don't care I, at I'm all about being told that I've said something offensive yeah. because I want to know and I want to learn and exactly. I want to develop my vocabulary from it and, yeah. and learn how to word things better and Expand think about things better our, our consciousness <clears throat> yeah. through communication do not uh, like push people into corners yeah. for saying something that just didn't fit with your narrative yeah um, but also and I feel like as well I should add like, I feel like we don't <laughs> always need to be angry about it when someone says something wrong unless it's something that it, like it, People it's should know wrong. at this point, you know, it's like, come on, you you know that that's, if someone's going out their way to be offensive, you know, mm. you're allowed to be angry at that point. But see if you just have a conversation with someone, you just say, here, listen, you should probably say it like that. Yeah. That's a good way. To I, I agree with that. I mean, if you're, if you're really, really angry about it, go for it. Scream at someone if, if you feel that you really need to. But the best way to get these things across is probably just have a conversation. I feel like even if someone's really... <clears throat> Like really wrong. Mm -hmm. I think it's still a better way of handling yeah, it. Yeah, it's definitely, probably definitely. calm and collected than it yeah. is scream and shout. I mean, scream I wouldn't be shout. a screamer and shouter, but me, I mean, if someone like, I don't know. It depends. It is very contextual, you know. Yeah, of course it is. But if someone, if someone slips up, if someone says, even if someone says something completely wrong, if they're just saying it, do you can just say it back? Yeah. If they're, I mean, if the situation is they're starting a fight. Yeah. Then yeah, maybe yeah. fighting is a good alternative to just relaxed conversation, <laughs> um, and you should try and uh, I don't know adapt to the situation. Yeah. Um, my point is is that I'm not trying to fight with anyone. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> saying some stuff, and if you think I'm wrong, tell me. Oh no, you're Say some stuff back. Under the table over here. It's I not think a big you're table, to right? With me. Get off my back about this. <laughs> I will fight about under the table stuff. <laughs> my feet are just taking up where my feet should be taken up. <laughs> Maybe you're playing footsie with me. Takes two to footsie. Um, my, uh, what, my, what, was I, what was the other thing I was going to say there before you uh, rudely interrupted? Um, <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know when, but back in the day, I think maybe uh, like pre, pre-common era, a lot of uh, people who would now be like, I don't know, like, institutional like would be locked away yeah, do you know what I mean yeah, yeah. these people were like looked at as like prophets mm -hmm. they were treated really well because they, they thought this person is not seeing uh, or is not bound to our, our physics or is not mm -hmm. bound to our logic is not bound to our understanding of the world around us they're thinking completely uh, untethered they're thinking freely so they were seen as 
really sort of like a good blessing in a weird mm-hmm. way. And then it was flipped completely upside down. They were locked away. Yeah, and then, yeah. But I mean, yeah. And they were just sitting in some kind of strange middle ground, yeah, middle territory right. where it's like, oh, some sympathise with them when they shouldn't really... There's nothing to feel sorry for them yeah, for. Yeah, exactly. And others judge them and make fun of them. <laughs> yeah. And that also doesn't make sense. There's nothing to make fun of them for. And we should, just... yeah, we should only feel sorry for those who have a lesser quality of life by the what they have. Um, and if the lesser quality of life is caused by society or government, like being locked away, mm-hmm. then... You shouldn't feel sorry for them. You should feel angry for them. Yeah. You should try and change this because I believe that nobody should be locked away for just having. I mean, I'm not saying that people are locked away anymore. Um, but people shouldn't be locked away. Uh, the point still stands. People shouldn't be locked away for having something. Do you know what I mean? Having uh, some sort of mental difference. What about a paedophile? Yeah, that's that different. It's never acted upon. It's never acted upon it. Yeah. Well, that's. Well, if they're, what they're a paedophile though. Yeah. So that's like a serial killer saying, "No, I'm. I am a serial. I will kill tons of people. I just haven't." <laughs> then yeah, I think that person goes to jail. That person is yeah. a danger. Yeah. They're if, what they're openly a paedophile. They just haven't acted upon it. Well, there's there's people like this in the world. Yeah. And they say, I'm they, a those people should be in jail. I'm attracted to children, but I would never act upon it. I have never acted upon it. What should happen to those people? They should go to jail. Yeah. Well, I think they'd be better off not saying contra- anything I'm at not, all. I don't know how I feel about it, but that is a controversial opinion. Look, I'm not, I'm, I hope to God I'm not going to be called out for saying paedophiles should go to jail, right? <laughs> but um, I think... Just saying that's something that's, like, oh, as you could say, wrong with someone, or like something... That's that definitely wrong has, with someone, you know? yeah. Um, that they probably didn't have any say in because it's, I don't know, genetic, is inbuilt, you know... Um, no, I think I think they should go to jail. I'm, I think I, someone chooses chooses to be a paedophile. No, I don't think like someone to be attracted to children, or do they choose to act upon it? Like, how much say do they have in these things? I'm not defending um, or attacking. I'm just I just mu- wonder. Wait, what's the question here? Do do they mentally choose to be a paedophile? Is that what you're asking me? <laughs> I like, hope not. Are people just preset to, or some people just preset to be attracted to children? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And then the choice comes in acting upon it. I, I think that... Is that where the choice comes in? I think that you can be born a paedophile, yeah. yeah. I think you can be born with a, the specific uh, code that makes yeah. you want to yeah. be a paedophile. But nevertheless, I guess if you have an eye to point, I get your point. But at the same time... It's There's still... some people that see it as like a genu- genuine... Like, De- not disability, but something that's like harming them, like yeah, them well, and like damaging their I, lives because they don't want to be a paedophile, you know, and they they don't act upon it. I and think if like, you say yeah, if they haven't acted upon it, then it's like well they haven't broken they haven't broken the law, they haven't committed a crime. Mm-hmm. But also, if someone is openly admitting the, the potential, is no, there. The, just the comparison of yeah, I would definitely kill a ton of people, mm-hmm. but I'm just not going to act upon it. Yeah. You would still be like, that guy is a bit sketchy if you ask yeah. me, you know? I guess if there was someone who had some kind of handicap and they were like prone to trying to kill people or something. like They should go to jail. Should that person go to jail? Yeah, I, I, that's, that's exactly where I'm coming from. Yeah. I do not think we should... Because right uh, now I feel like these people go to like facilities. No, they should go like to jail. They should I do go not, to jail? Hmm. Well, jail, I think jail should be completely different than it is though. Hmm. Uh, I think you, uh, jail should be what it's supposed to be and it's supposed to be a rehabilitation centre. Yeah. It's not just supposed to be time for like yeah. doing wrong. Yeah. It should be a way to try and change people to fit into society. Uh, people who do wrong. And by people who do wrong, those are people who kill. Those are people who do wrong. People who just think differently. People who are like, I don't know, like uh, schizophrenic or bipolar. They're not doing wrong. They're just thinking differently. Mm-hmm. It's not a danger. They shouldn't be put into uh, hospitals uh, to just try and fit into society. They shouldn't. They shouldn't have to fit into society. They should be free to think and yeah. have the unique like perspective that they have, unless as again causing them distress or distress or, or a lesser quality of life. Then 
there I should I believe they should be more than welcome to try and uh, obtain uh, the right Re- resources and, and treatment to change uh, to fit into society if that helps them but if someone for example is bipolar and has killed someone mm. I think they should just be uh, they should go through the same procedures as everyone else um, they, they are still a murderer mm. it doesn't matter what the motive is I think it, to be a murderer in the first place you have to be in most cases, you know what it's like. You can get deemed criminally insane, you know. So yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. There is leniency for people like this. I mean, yeah, yeah. there's a yeah. Because I, it's something they didn't choose. But then, if who who chooses these things, you know, are is everyone incapable of swaying these things? Um, I suppose it depends on what what you're specifically asking about. I I think in general. That it's just everyone should be treated as a off the bat equal, and then each case should be considered case by case. It shouldn't be like oh they're just a they're just this or they're just that. Yeah. And it shouldn't be just. I don't think things should be black or white. Everything should be grey. Mm-hmm. Um, because everything is so uh, hard to define, and again, it's so hard to define. It's not even worth defining in many yeah. ways. And like just saying someone is this or someone is that, do you know what I mean? I get you. It's what well, ugh, ugh, ugh. We really are a pair of tangenters. Yeah. Um, I, I feel we've not dissatisfied. Full, we've not gone full circle with this. That's the problem. We've not brought it back around to hobbies. <laughs> Don't even know if I want to talk about hobbies anymore. <laughs> um. I don't really know what to say. Mm. My mind's just more full than it was when I started. Oh, that's just because I, I um, made you come out as ADHD. Yeah, I'm triggered by it. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, maybe I do the have ADHD. Maybe I have like the chemical. Do you code care to be tested or told by doctors do, that yeah, this actually, is your yes. plan of action? I care to be tested. Be quite, I'm quite curious to find out <laughs> if I do actually have ADHD. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't do anything if yeah. I found out. I, would, I mean, pff, what do I care? See, like the 16 personality test. Oh. And every everyone gets put into 16 different categories. I think that everyone's like that anyway, even out with the 16 personality test. I think that As everyone talk about next episode? comes with their own bundles of differences from the next person and the next person and the next person and the next person and one of those groups is just seen as normal and one of those groups groups may appear as normal but they've actually got 500 hidden like problems you know um problems problems if you there's no, there's done, no uh, default anymore. If you haven't done the 16 personalities test, you should do it and then you should uh, comment what one, like, or message me and tell me what one you are. Um, I feel like. Yeah, do you want to do the next episode on that? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Tom hates it. But that's because no, he's doing ENTP. Yes, <laughs> yes. Just so I can say why How we shouldn't know it, it and why it's. That's a good conversation yeah, to have. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next episode, uh, you'll get on uh, Thursday coming. personality test. Uh, 16 personalities test. Um, yeah, do it and then message me what you've done. And the reason I say message me is because it's clear that when I say comment, no one comments. Literally, and it's like, oh God, that's embarrassing, no one comments. But when I say message, people are like, oh, I'll message. And they feel more comfortable. I don't know, what, like, again, hmm. I feel like that's to do with like, that idea. Like, people are scared of, like, to the do person yeah. or the first person or I guess yeah. it's, it's like imagine uh, we're in like an auditorium and I was like oh who wants to come and speak with me and everyone's like oh I don't want to do that I've gone I want to go stand up front there and speak and whatever but then if I was just in a room with one other person and I'm like do you want to talk and they were like yeah sure that's what it feels <laughs> like yeah. so yeah, yeah. So you true. can uh, you can message that's me so um, and have a conversation about your uh, 16 personalities if you want or just tell me what it is I don't want to Converse you. I don't want to talk to you. No, I'm not kidding. You can tell me what it is. Um, you can message me too. Yeah, message uh, Lucy. Shout out your handles. <laughs> nah, just link them. <laughs> I've got the lazy gene. 
I really lazy gene too. I'm not going to uh, link them. I want to see if you can find them. Thank you for it's watching. It's at Lucifer underscore underscore underscore. See, it's just awkward to say. It's just well, you've that said it now. Uh, like mine, uh, Sir Tom Gibson. That's at exactly. Sir Tom Gibson. S I R T O M G I B S O N. Thank have you for any watching. Underscores. Um, thanks for watching this episode of Volumes. And if you wanna uh, 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 just watch it, you can. I mean, you just did. What was I gonna say? If you wanna, if you... I can't wait to eat this kiwi. Uh, I've been eyeing it up the whole oh, time. Yeah, that's a nice kiwi. Volumes music, please now.